Yuri Alexeyevich Gagarin. First man in space. The third of four children, Yuri Alexeyevich Gagarin was born on March 9, 1934, in Plushino, a small village west of Moscow in Russia, then known as the Soviet Union. Gagarin graduated as a molder from a trade school near Moscow in 1951. He continued his studies at the Industrial College at Saratov and concurrently took a course in flying. He made his first solo flight in 1955. On completing this course, he entered the Soviet Air Force Cadet School at Orenburg, from which he graduated with top honors in 1957. Yuri Gagarin was just one of 3,000 applicants to be the first Soviet cosmonaut. Out of this large pool of applicants, 20 were chosen in 1960 to be the Soviet Union's first cosmonauts. Gagarin was one of the 20. Out of the 20 originally selected, the final choice for the first launch was between Gagarin and German Tita because of their performance in training as well as their physical fitness. Gagarin was chosen to be first man into space. German Tita was chosen to be the substitute in case Gagarin was unable to make flight. On April 12, 1961, Gagarin became the first man to travel into space, launching to orbit aboard the Vostok 3 Ka-3, Vostok 1. His call sign in this flight was Cedar. Minutes before the launch Gagarin gave a speech, which included. You must realize that it is hard to express my feeling now that the test for which we have been training long and passionately is at hand. I don't have to tell you what I felt when it was suggested that I should make this flight, the first in history. Was it joy? No, it was something more than that. Pride? No, it was not just pride. I felt great happiness. To be the first to enter the cosmos, to engage single-handed in an unprecedented duel with nature, could anyone dream of anything greater than that? But immediately after that I thought of the tremendous responsibility I bore, to be the first to do what generations of people had dreamed of, to be the first to pave the way into space for mankind. The Stoke One with Yuri Gagarin inside, launched on schedule at 9.07 am Moscow time. As the rocket blasted off, Gagarin reportedly said Poi Kali, or here we go. After entering space, Gagarin completed a single orbit around Earth. At the end of the orbit, Vostok 1 re-entered the Earth's atmosphere. When Vostok 1 was still about 7 kilometers from the ground, Gagarin ejected, as planned, from the spacecraft and used a parachute to land safely. The flight lasts a total of 108 minutes. At 11.05 am Yuri Gagarin lands near a village in the Saratov region, in present-day Russia, on the right bank of the Volga River, where he has to explain to some farmers that although he comes from space, he is a Soviet, like them. After the flight, Gagarin became hero of the Soviet Union and a world-famous celebrity. He toured in many places like in Italy, the United Kingdom, Germany, Canada, Japan. In 1962, he began serving as a deputy to the Supreme Soviet of the Soviet Union. He later came back to Star City. While there, he worked on designs for a reusable spacecraft. Gagarin worked on these designs in Star City for seven years. On November 6, 1963 he got the rank of Colonel of the Soviet Air Force. Gagarin was backup pilot for Vladimir Komarov in the Soyuz 1 flight. As Komarov's flight ended in a deadly crash, Gagarin was banned from training for and helping out in further space flights. On March 27, 1968, while on a routine training flight from Chkalovsky Air Base, he and flight instructor Vladimir Sarijan died in a MiG crash near the town of Kurch. Gagarin and Sarijan were buried in the walls of the Kremlin on Red Square. People are not sure what caused the crash and there are several theories, testimonies and investigations about death of famous astronaut. Personal life. His parents worked on a collective farm, Alexei Ivanovich Gagarin as a carpenter and Anatim Afeyevna Gagarin as a dairy farmer. Yuri was the third of four children. During the German advance on Moscow, German officer took over the Gagarin residence. On the land behind their house, the family were allowed to build a mud hut measuring approximately 3 by 3 meters, where they spent 21 months until the end of the occupation. In 1957, while a cadet in flight school, Gagarin met Valentina Goryacheva at the May Day celebrations at the Red Square in Moscow. She was a medical technician who had graduated from Orenburg Medical School. They were married on 7th of November of the same year, the same day Gagarin graduated from his flight school. They had two daughters, Yelena Yuryevna Gagarna, born 1959, 
and Galina Yuryevna Gagarna, born 1961. Interesting facts. During his flight, Gagarin famously whistled the Russian song The Motherland Hears The Motherland Knows. The first two lines of the song are, The Motherland Hears The Motherland Knows, where her son flies in the sky. In the honor to Yuri Gagarin and 50th anniversary of his flight, General Assembly of the United Nations, in its resolution from April 7, 2011, declared 12th of April as the International Day of Human Spaceflight. Yuri Gagarin was fond of ice hockey and he was amateur hockey player. He played as a goalkeeper. As well as being a good ice hockey player, Gagarin was also a basketball fan, and coached the Saratov Industrial Technical School team, as well as being a referee. In 1968, after the tragic death of Yuri Gagarin, by the decree of the Presidium of the Supreme Council of the RSFSR, Gzotsk was renamed Gagarin in honor of the first cosmonaut, a native of Gzotsky district. Notable quotes. During the flight. Let's go. The earth is blue. How pretty. It's incredible. I'm flying over the sea. It is possible to determine the direction of movement. After the flight. Circling the earth in the orbital spaceship I marveled at the beauty of our planet. People of the world. Let us safeguard and enhance this beauty, not destroy it. Looking at the earth from afar you realize it is too small for conflict and just big enough for cooperation.